Okay, it's time for DigiKey and Adafruit bring you... This week's I on MPI is Panasonic. That's right. They're a friend of ours. They, they are. They're nearby. They're in New Jersey. And uh, today's IMPI is a sensor from Panasonic. We've carried their GridEye sensor for a while, and they um, actually contacted us after we put the GridEye in the shop and said, hey, we have this really cool particle sensor coming out. And we said, great, let us know when it's available. And they did, and then we were like, hey, this is a, a very good eye on NPI candidate. So we slotted it up, and we got one, and it's time to talk about this new particle sensor. Um, so the uh, – oh, sorry, can you go uh, – here, no, start here. Oh, I'm um, sorry. Let's go here. Pardon. It's the SNGCJA5L. Couldn't memorize that. Um, but this is a, a particulate sensor from um, Panasonic. And what it does is it can detect dust particles in the air. So previous ion NPIs, we showed off um, uh, sensors that did uh, barometric pressure or did uh, volatile organic gases. But uh, the other kind of air quality that you might be interested in measuring is particles. And this is something that comes up if you live in a city that has smog or if you, are, uh, if you have wildfires nearby you, and a lot of people had to deal with that over the summer, um, you know that you'll get an air quality index alert that tells you, hey, uh, wear a filtering mask because um, there's particles in the air from the soot from the fire that um, could harm your lungs. So there's different classes of particles, um, the size of them. And um, this graph, you know, I, I grabbed from Wikipedia, shows some of the different particles um, that you might have to deal with. But basically, you know, you're looking at micrometer, micrometer-sized particles, like 1, uh, 2.5, and two, uh, 10 are the most common sizes of particles that people are looking uh, to measure. And uh, how this works. So inside uh, this box, there's a fan, and that's actually pretty important. You want to have something to uh, bring air in. And uh, it, it brings the air, a little bit of air in, and then it has this laser diode. There's the lasers inside of it with a lens. And it bounces the laser off of the air. And you know how, like, when you have, like, a sunbeam in, like, your living room? Yeah, and I'm like, wow, it's dusty in here. And you're like, wow, yeah. it's really dusty in here. It's the same thing, right? You're, you're uh, flashing light uh, directly, a really a, a very... Uh, uh, collimated beam of light on particles, you're going to get little reflections. And the reflections um, can then be detected by, uh, you know, a light sensor and then processed by the microcontroller. And then, you know, there's, it doesn't actually count every particle. It just does a, a very good approximation and it's calibrated and then it pipes out um, the output. Um, so here is, you know, you can get, of course, extremely expensive uh, dust sensors and compare it. But this one is like, you know, like 20 bucks or so. But for the price and size, you're going to get very accurate results. So you can see here um, the density values, which is uh, micrograms per uh, cubic meter. And um, the, the measurement accuracy, it's going to be within like 10%. So it, it, again, it doesn't count every particle. It gives you an approximation. But the approximation can be quite good. Um, what I really like about this sensor is that it's got two ways to wire it. Um, a lot of particle sensors, um, especially the lower cost ones, only have your output. What I really like about this sensor is it also has I squared C. You get your if you'd like, but I squared C is really nice because for a lot of single board computers or mic controllers, they don't necessarily have a spare UART, or you want to use the UART for something else. Um, in that case, I squared C could be a really good option because you know you can share the I squared C bus with anything else. I squared C is kind of just a universal sensor interface, and so when they said this sensor has I squared C, I said that's very, very, very handy um, because it means you can actually use it with stuff like you know Raspberry Pi or an Arduino or a particle board, not particulate sensor, but like the cellular board is called particle. Um, so you have a particle particle sensor. Um, if you would like to just quickly test it, what I thought was neat is they provide a Windows program, and then you can just use an everyday USB to serial console cable, because again, the UART data coming out is just 9600 baud serial data. So I just grabbed, you know, like an FTDI cable, and I connected the TX pin from the sensor to the RX pin of the adapter, uh, ran this program, looked for the COM port, and it just started spitting out data, um, you know, each report has a, uh, you can see it's here 57, this is the 57th report, and it tells you the PM 
1.0, 2.5, and PM10 uh, you know, microgram per meter measurements. And then uh, I took my soldering iron and I kind of like blew some smoke near a sensor and you can see uh, the values went up very, very quickly. Um, but once I took away the smoke, they came down again just as quickly. So it's, it's a very reactive sensor. You'll get data about once a second. All right, this is available on DigiKey and the uh, part is P120, uh, 25021ND and the short URL is digikey.com forward slash short ZDCVBJ. And uh, we have a little bit of a demo. Yeah, let's show off this demo. Right. We're gonna we're gonna get a little dangerous. Yeah, well, dangerous as far as I'm learning a okay. candle. So this is uh, the sensor, and I've got wired up over I squared C to this feather board, and then I've got um, a little display. You see, it's updating about once a second, but it's a very clean in here. It's under uh, one microgram per meter cube. But we're about to change that. I'm about to ruin this with a with a candle. With a candle. And this is a uh, scented. scented soy candle. Lavender. Lavender. Okay. So the candle itself is going to have some effect. Here, I'll hold this up. Yeah. To. Uh, it's gonna. You're gonna see the numbers go up. Okay, so it's like going to two or one, but then when you blow it out, that creates a lot of uh, smoke. I know. So much smoke. So, so, but what you did know, we do to ourselves? We what have we done to this planet? We know because it's like maxing out. It's like 1,900, 2,000 uh, PM10 particles. So basically don't uh, constantly blow out candles and huff the smoke. Yeah. Lots of dust particles in it. Um, but it works you know, quite well. And I like that it's very slim and elegant. It's small. It's easy to use. It's got little mounting holes. So um, a nice little sensor, and you can see, you know, it, it, the air clears out pretty quickly. So we're fine. We fixed the planet. We fixed the planet. Okay, um, and then I'm not gonna show this whole video, but what I did wanna show is uh, just a snippet. So if you search on our site or online and just search for Adafruit Panasonic, you'll see a really great video. It's about two minutes and 30 Pre -COVID. seconds. Yeah, <laughs> two minutes and 30 seconds. And they did a really beautiful job. They came out to New York uh, we had visited Panasonic, so I just want to show the intro, and then you can see one of the engineers talking to Lady Ada again, pre-COVID. Um, but That's I wanted—I so wanted to give them a shout out for making a, a very informational video, but also um, it, it told our story and it showed manufacturing in New York. So we're just going to watch the first uh, few seconds of it now. Hi, I'm Eric Johnsrud from Panasonic, and I'm here with Lady Ada. Hi. Well, where are we? We're here at the Ada Food Factory in downtown Manhattan. We have a pick and place line where we actually do in-house. All right, so you can watch the full thing later, but that's the video, and that is this week's Iron MPI. Thanks, everybody. Tune in next week. Hi, on MPI.